Prime. And uh, we are on a wonderful journey here uh, with Prime developing a lot of new activities and one of them being the Prime Chapter Talks. So um, since uh, August last year, we've had the Prime Chapter Talks. This actually originated as an idea out of uh, from the Nordic chapter in a discussion uh, that they had about that they wanted to encourage chapters to talk about what's going on in the chapter and what's going on in the region of the world uh, in order to share with other chapters. And we are, as you can see, recording this session. So it will be available on our website for people who could not attend right now to explore and, and look at, uh, at some later stage. Uh, so that, that is wonderful. And of course, it is a particular pleasure for me today to welcome uh, the France Benelux chapter who have organized and uh, hosting this uh, chap chapter talk. And uh, I'm very, very curious to know more about the SGD barometer that you've been working on in this chapter for quite a while now. I've heard a lot about it. I know a little bit about it. Uh, so I, I'm very excited to know more about uh, this work uh, over the next hour. It is, of course, also my pleasure today to welcome uh, the three um, dedicated uh, people, Prime Chapter Benelux, France Benelux, active uh, people who have organized uh, the uh, session for today. First of all, we have uh, Christa finstaden Million, who joined the France Benelux Chapter Steering Committee in June 2019. And uh, from December last year, uh, she was elected chair of the chapter. So warm welcome, Krista. Thank uh, you. You are also an associate uh, professor and director of the Human Resource and uh, Organizational Behavior Department at ICN Business School in uh, uh, Paris, Nancy, and Berlin. Your teaching and interests uh, lie in change management, sustainable human resource management, including female male equality and action learning. And, uh, and uh, you are indeed an engaged scholar in, in the ICNN, in the female uh, male equality group of the French Association, Conférence de Grande École. I hope I pronounced this uh, more or less uh, correct. Sounds um, good. And you, mm -hmm. have also, <laughs> you have also a, a, a great publication record uh, behind you uh, in these research areas. Other research engagement include that you've been the coordinator, uh, or you are the coordinator of the French Prime School's um, contribution to the SGD barometer uh, here, and also ICN's new UNESCO chair for research on art and science and their practical links to the SDGs. Also another very interesting uh, topic. So uh, this is Krista, and Krista, you bring with you Jan Beine, and uh, Jan has been working on sustainable development topics, corporate social responsibility, and the SDGs during the past uh, eight years. And uh, you have a, uh, you bring with you a master in social economic sciences uh, at the University of Antwerp. You were also uh, uh, from 2013 till 18, for five years, the, the program uh, manager at the uh, CIFAL Flanders and UN Training Center in, in Flanders, or Flanders uh, promoting the UN SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals. And during the past years, uh, you have um, you joined um, uh, the Sustainable Transformation Lab of Antwerp, Antwerp Management School, where you combine research and training in function of sustainable transformation projects. Um, and you're currently doing a doctoral st study on the integration of sustainable practices in organizations. And lastly, but not finally, we have uh, Mirja Mitterman. Uh, you are the lecturer, um, um, uh, policy advisor and lecturer in business and society at TIAS, T I A S, School for Business and Society in the Netherlands. And you are responsible for the integration of business and society within TIAS's education, very relevant for Prime. And you develop and implement a, a coherent com competency-based policy for the school and lectures on sustainable development related issues. Uh, you're also the academic director of the TS Pre-Master Program. And within the Prime Chapter of France Benelux here, you've been involved in the chapter's research projects con concerning the SDG barometer uh, and competences for sustainability. And also you have been the chapter secretary from its very start back in 2017 until last year uh, in December. 
So uh, Miriam, uh, Jan and Krista, a warm welcome to you and uh, please the, the stage is yours uh, for the next hour and I look much forward to uh, learn more about the SGD barometer. Warm welcome. Th thank you very much, Meta. Uh, um, so now we'll be coordinating this with Jan. Thank you, Jan, for sharing the, the PowerPoint. So uh, welcome, uh, all of you. I see we have about 28. Thank you, uh, Sophie uh, Meta, for organizing this, making this possible. Uh, we're, we're very pleased to, uh, to spearhead this, um, the first talk, uh, the first um, chapter talk, chapter among chapter talks. Uh, happy to host this, uh, happy to host this around an initiative that was, was taken by our, our Belgian colleagues. And so they will be Belgian and then taken over by or adopted by uh, the Dutch, uh, Dutch members and then uh, French members of which I am one of the members. So as a, as, as a chair of our chapter, I'd like to just again, once again, introduce uh, to you the, the topic of our talk. It'll be a one hour talk. Uh, we'll leave time at the end, make sure that there'll be time for interaction. You can, as Sophie suggested also, uh, write any, any comments or questions you might have on the chat. Make, try to make this as interactive as possible all the way through. But we'll leave maybe more of the, more the questions at the end. So this is a prime um, chapter talk. If we can go on to the next slide, we'll be spending one hour together I can ask, uh, can ask uh, Jan to, to go to the next slide, please. Welcome, right. Okay. Will, um, the, what is the, just uh, as an overview of what we're, we're going to be today, we're, what we're going to do this afternoon and the purpose of our talk is to inform uh, our public about the, what this SDG barometer is, the research project is, where the journey that we have come collectively together um, and the institutions that are playing a key role, what have we have learned through this process? We'd like to do, we'd like to share what we feel the relevance of such a project is uh, in terms of contributing to responsible management in the region and beyond. So we'll begin with a brief um, introduction uh, about, about the chapter. We'll move on to the history of the, the SDG Barometer Project and the main outcomes of the Belgium to 2020 SDG Barometer. Then we'll be a brief look, looking at the state of the Dutch and the French projects and the plans. And then we'll be moving on. We'll be making a point about what we're wrapping it up by talking about what SDGs are and the link with the educational institutions, and then our conclusions. Next slide, right, okay. A brief uh, introduction to uh, our chapter. We were the fifth uh, chapter born uh, in November, 2017. As Meta mentioned earlier, uh, Miriam was um, one of the founding members and she was the secretary until uh, December. Uh, Eva Gulak, uh, Juluk was the um, was the uh, chair. We have we count fifty two signatory schools, five from Belgium, nine from the Netherlands, one from Luxembourg, and thirty seven from France. Just to share our, our our vision and our mission, which comes directly from the official documents you can uh, you can refer to on the on the Prime website. Our vision is the friend. The France Benelux Prime Chapter envisions to transform the mindset of business and society in the region by making ethics, sustainability, and responsible management education the norm. It's a very ambitious, uh, ambitious vision, as all visions are. Our mission is the France Benelux Prime Chapter aims to embrace, engage, and achieve our vision in cooperation with all relevant stakeholders and through a proactive creation of solutions by steering an agenda for impact by going above and beyond the achievement of the sustainable development goals through developing joint research and educational projects. Uh, our SDG research and pedagogical initiatives very much uh, illustrates this, um, this vision and mission. Go on to the next slide. 
and Jan will take over. Thank you, Krista, and thank you also for introduction, uh, Meta. Um, first question to raise today uh, is, yeah, why the SDG barometer? Um, well, actually, we summed up four points. Uh, first, we want to address some major SDG challenges for Belgium, the Netherlands, and France. As you see on the right side, um, this is uh, a graph uh, from the 2020 SDG Index for Europe. And some of you might have uh, read this document, but there are a lot of challenges remaining uh, in, in a lot of European countries and also in Belgium, the Netherlands and France regarding the SDGs. So um, we wanted to actually have a follow up on previous uh, CSR reports. And there are various CSR reports existing in uh, the three countries, um, uh, Belgium, the Netherlands and France, but also in other European countries um, where we want to have a kind of a follow-up. Um, what do we want to do? Why the SDG barometer? Well, mainly to monitor SDG awareness, adoption, implementation, and communication to then generate insights for policy and practice. So these are actually, let's say, the four main goals why we wanted to start with this SDG uh, barometer. Talking about the Belgium story first, who joined forces and how? Together with uh, the colleagues at the University of Antwerp and UC Louvain, um, here also representing by uh, Lax Moratis and Valérie Swan, who are also part of this call. Um, we did a research um, with the support of the Federal Institute for Sustainable Development. And actually this research started quite early in the sense that we did a first SDG barometer in 2018. And this was initiated by Antwerp Management School, the University of Antwerp and UC Louvain. And the colleagues also here in this uh, call, a lot of credits go to them because they started this process um, now two, three years ago, where they uh, launched a first uh, report on the status of the SDG implementation in Belgium. Now with this study, we wanted to do a follow-up, a follow-up where we learned from 2018 about the awareness of the SDGs in a lot of Belgium organizations. Um, this time we wanted to, to uh, do a similar study, a follow-up study, um, looking at a survey, quantitative research and qualitative research. So we did um, around 15 interviews in the several uh, parts and in several organizations uh, in Belgium. So in the Flemish region, in Brussels and in the Walloon region. Uh, so we work together with uh, a lot of organizations to really receive also the uh, 961 respondents for the survey. And with organizations, I mean sector federations, uh, a lot of universities, um, and uh, some other organizations, companies, uh, network organizations within Belgium. On the graph below, you see the breakdown. So mainly um, uh, companies responded to the survey. Uh, we had also, uh, this is all in percentages, we had 6% of NGOs who responded, government, governmental organizations, 11% uh, educational institutions, and then 7% other. On the right side, you see um, the beautiful frame of the SDG uh, barometer 2020. So this is actually um, how we initiated uh, it in 2020. And I'd like to uh, point out a few main results of uh, this uh, report with you. First, um, one of the uh, main uh, first questions was to what extent do organizations take into account the SDGs? You see that 25% here responded that their organization has taken several concrete steps towards integrating the SDGs in its strategy. Uh, we will discuss maybe later also how uh, our organizations are integrating this. Um, but you see, for example, also 2020, 22% uh, um, uh, answered our organization has partly or fully translated the SDGs to its own context and environment to make the SDGs better applicable. But as you can see also in uh, this um, result, there are some other ways to really uh, take into account the SDGs, such as 
going or entering into a partnership with various stakeholders to evolve around one or more SDGs or develop specific strategies or policy programs to integrate the SDGs. As a next question, we also asked how do organizations track SDG progress? Where we really focused on how do organizations look at the SDG indicators as well. Uh, and again, here the breakdown as you see it, around 50%, half of the respondents said that uh, their organization does not use indicators to track progress on the SDGs. 22% uh, uh, answered our organization uses several of the indicators proposed by the UN to track progress on the SDGs. And then another um, interesting insight is that 15% uh, of the organizations uses indicators to track progress on the SDGs, but not those proposed by the UN. Actually, the 7% uh, uses all indicators proposed by the UN to track progress on the SDGs. What was new in this SDG uh, barometer 2020 uh, in comparison with 2018 um, research is that we did a little bit more research on the materiality assessments organizations do. What are the priorities of, of organizations and in what uh, way do they use SDGs to execute their materiality assessments? We did uh, specific research, research on the Bell 20 companies, um, but we asked also uh, to all organizations this question. And you see on the left side, that 44% does not execute a materiality assessment, 36% uh, does that. But also, maybe quite surprising, 20% they don't know. So um, on the right side, you see that 41% of the organizations takes into account the SDGs to a certain degree when performing a materiality analysis. 14% uh, says uh, my organization does not take into account the SDGs at all when performing a materiality analysis. And 12% fully aligns our, their materiality analysis with the SDGs. Of course, we are in the COVID year. Um, so this question um, should uh, also be included. And actually, it's a quite interesting result. Um, we asked all the respondents uh, and also in the in-depth the in interviews, what the effect is of COVID-19 on the SDGs also towards their organization. And you see that 32% highlights that the uh, COVID-19 crisis um, is, is more important than ever in the sense that the SDGs are looked at more important than ever. 27% also say then that there will be a delay in the realization of the SDGs. So this is an interesting result, and we will also uh, maybe come back to that in, in the discussion we, we will have later. So this is actually a very short uh, wrap up of some uh, results of this uh, SDG barometer, and we will continue uh, later also on some other results specifically uh, surrounded by the educational institutions. I pass the word uh, to Miriam um, to talk about the current state of the Dutch project. Thank you, Jan. Um, yes, so I'm currently representing the Dutch um, research group on the SDG barometer, um, but we're actually with six people involved at the moment. Um, so Vincent and Carolyn are here uh, in this talk as well. So thank you for joining and please also feel free to add um, whenever necessary. And also to one, a colleague of Vincent and Carolyn who are both from um, the University of Applied Sciences Amsterdam, or Hogeschool van Amsterdam, if you see here in the in the logo, um, she was part of the initiating, um, well, let's say team. And to first discuss briefly the current state of, of affairs in the Netherlands, um, to the first bullet is research group formed. Um, that took some time. So last year, well, about a year ago, end of January, early February, we had our chapter meeting in Brussels. Um, there also Jan presented uh, the Belgium research project on the SDG barometer and then the idea um, developed of turning this into a chapter-wide project. So we formed a Dutch research group with um, 
well, representative of various Dutch schools. Um, so University of Applied Sciences Amsterdam, the Open University and Maastricht School of Management and TIAS that I'm representing as well. Um, and the initial group existed both of um, faculty researchers, but also of policy officers such as Tuan um, and myself. Well, I have a combined role as policy officer and researcher. Um, and that um, needed some time um, to hand over to form a group um, that exists of, um, well, mainly researchers. So over the year, the group uh, developed and uh, Tuan, for example, handed over to Vincent and Carolyn, who I mentioned. Um, I also involved another colleague, Philip, who unfortunately could not join us this afternoon. Um, but so part of the process was really forming a research group um, and that took some time. The initial idea last year was to um, replicate the Belgium survey and have a parallel process with more or less the same survey last year in the Netherlands so that we would, would be able to compare the outcomes in, in both countries. Um, but as the Dutch process took some more time, um, we shifted um, the course during the year. So now we've decided with the researchers to build on the Belgium research. So we still um, base the planned survey on the initial survey that was done in Belgium, but we also build on the results that Jan just represented and we take into account any other uh, relevant Dutch reports, uh, research undertaken, um, also general reports in order to make sure that we are really relevant. So the purpose is not replicating what has been done, but we really want to build on existing SDG research and knowledge. Um, so having said that, um, this is also a call upon you all present here. If you are aware of any relevant SDG related research or reports, please feel free to share them with us either now in the chat or our email addresses will be shared on the last slide as well. Um, so we try to gather as much as information as we can, but um, well, we're probably not complete. So please feel free to send us any suggestions that you may have. Okay, so the current state is that we have now formed a research group. We're building on the work done in, in Belgium um, and in the Netherlands. Um, we're discussing this also with Dutch CSR and, and SDG networks in order to be relevant. And at this moment, we intend to spread a Dutch survey after the summer holidays. And um, also based on the outcome of the survey, we can then continue with more in-depth research on specific topics. Some learnings from the process, or maybe I should rather use the word insights in, instead of learnings, um, is that the, the Belgian project was funded. Um, there were some subsidies involved. So in the Netherlands, we had the discussion, um, should we aim to uh, get subsidized as well? In the end, we decided that, um, well, the time and energy it would cost us to get some funding if at all, um, if, if we would spend it on the research project itself, um, we would probably um, be more um, effective. So for the time being, we, we decided not to focus on uh, getting funded, um, but more on the project itself. And if we manage to get some funding along the way, of course, it would be very welcome, um, but it's not our priority at the moment. Um, in Belgium, there's a many partners involved. We also discussed possible partnerships with some Dutch parties. Um, but we found out that, well, the more parties there are involved, also the, the more difficult it gets to, to focus. So for the moment, we decided to make it really uh, a, a business school based research project. Um, of course, again, we welcome any other parties in the Netherlands to spread the survey and to provide their input and opinions. Um, but we have a, a core group that will lead the research. Well, I already stressed that we try to build on existing research. Um, I think 
over the last years, an increasing amount of research has been done. So it, it's getting, well, maybe even difficult to um, keep track of all the work that is uh, being done. But again, we really strive to be um, aware of all the trends, especially in the Netherlands, and to add to those, not to um, just replicate what we already know and what has been done. And the most important lesson is, especially since we're a rather an informal research group, that uh, the work takes much longer than we think. So as I said, initially, uh, we started off with a research group last year, um, and we thought we would have a parallel process. Um, that did not work out, but uh, right now we're very confident that we can still continue and uh, uh, have our first research outcomes um, during this calendar year. So I think so much for now. And then I would hand over to Krista for the French part of the research project. Thank you. And, and I have to tell you, Jan and Miriam, every time we get together, I think we, we mutually learn what the other has, has initiated, how far they're going. And it means it's an ongoing, um, it's an on, there, we have ongoing projects, there, there are interconnections. Uh, so I'm here to, on behalf of the, the first group of French schools who got together, uh, inspired by this, uh, this Belgian initiative, which was adopted, as Miriam said, by our uh, Dutch colleagues. And, and here are the, um, here are the logos of the five business schools that have um, that took part in the first research meeting we had, research coordinating meeting we had in the fall. Uh, I'm from ICN Business School, uh, TBS, uh, Toulouse Business School. Uh, Kim is here too. Kim is with us today. Uh, the IESEG uh, School of Management, uh, Maria Castillo and Francois Mont. I'm not sure, I didn't see their, their names in the list. Um, they were the ones who were present also. The Kedge Business School. Uh, I don't believe we have a representative today. And Odensia, or maybe Leticia is here. I think I saw Leticia Lambroise. Yes, I'm here. Hi, <laughs> sorry, hi, hi, I turned off my video. Uh, although I am from ESCP. So. Okay, great, great. you're ESCP. So you are here, great, thanks. ESCP, yeah. yeah, for joining us. Yeah. ESCP, uh, and I'm Maria's here from ESCP as well, yeah. Maria is here too. So you great. Okay, so we have two two colleagues from uh, ESEG. Uh, I don't believe we have a colleague from Kedge here. Uh, Emma, we have Emma Avetisian here from Adancia, although she is not. Uh, she's a member of the steering group. She's from Adancia. She won't be part taking part in this particular project, but she is here from the school. So we have representatives from these first schools who were who were interested in in doing something. Uh, the current state of what we're doing is uh, that we had meetings uh, with the Belgian, uh, with, with Jan and Miriam to understand the history of the SDG barometer, research methodology and results to date. When I said we had, um, I, was, I will say that myself and uh, Kim um, from Toulouse, we started trying to under, understand this, uh, knowing very well that the Belgian or Jan had had done uh, done presentations, uh, a presentation last year in our annual meeting in Brussels. We also had meetings with the Dutch team to understand how they're implementing the SDG barometer before bringing together the schools who had manifested their interest uh, last year in the Brussels annual meeting. So we had a first meeting, a first virtual meeting, of course, like everyone with interested French researchers and French prime members to introduce the project and to, uh, to share our findings, because of course to bring people together, you have to understand what you're talking about uh, and to raise the key questions. And we've also having parallel discussions with CSR business networks, but for the moment we're, we're definitely in the forming stage. Uh, uh, we haven't yet, there was some, um, we, have, we have to yet coordinate the project, decide who is going to lead, uh, lead what, uh, what are the contributions of our, of our different members. What have we learned from, from the process? And I will stick to learnings. Um, of course, learnings are insights, as Miriam uh, said. Uh, in, and I think we reiterate 
um, what Miriam has also shared with us, it takes time. Uh, it takes time to um, take on uh, a project which you didn't start from the very beginning. And so if you go through the learning process, which the other partners went through, and which you did not participate from the, from the beginning to really understand what it's all about and uh, what shape it's taking and how possibly you can adapt it. It's not always clear as to, uh, as to what initiative um, may already exist in the national landscape when I'm talking about initiative, what similar uh, barometer may exist. And just recent discussions, we had a discussion uh, not so long ago, Maria is here, I see. Maria Castillo is here. Yes. Maria, what, what, what were you saying in terms of a little discussion not too long ago about uh, this very question? There is yeah. another SDG barometer. There is an SDG there. barometer that was uh, published by the Global Compact in partnership with uh, PricewaterhouseCooper uh, this year and last year. So um, in terms of the French landscape, we would really need to kind of rethink uh, our positioning, um, look a little bit deeper into what was done. Um, what exists is not amazing, but um, it, there's something out there and they call it the SDG bar barometer. So, so that raises obviously a, an issue for us that we need to look um, more into, yeah. Obviously, and, and of course we do not have um, the sole pr propriety. We can't be sole property owners of the, this term, but um, uh, this was one of the questions we raised already in the fall. What else is out there? Uh, and now we, now we learn that something similar is called uh, SDG. We don't know how similar it is, but we'll, we'll adapt accordingly, of course. Uh, and there are other tools that are probably emerging tools. We won't call this a tool. Uh, we'll call it initiative in a broader, in a broader way. And we have to remain very open-minded about this. Uh, it, perhaps we should think the more the merrier if we're all moving forward in terms of creating awareness, um, uh, so be it. But it does, it does require some repositioning and maybe uh, in, in terms of, what, uh, of how we would fit into the national landscape. Uh, bringing together both quantitative and qualitative research is, uh, is ideal. This is very much a part of the Belgian initiative. Jan talked about the 15 uh, qualitative uh, interviews that were carried out and the over 900, almost 1,000 um, questionnaires that were filled and, and enable this barometer to be something that is quite, uh, quite impressive. Uh, it's ideal for such a research project. And of course, there are challenges. You have to create a common ground. In the end, um, we're, we're very positive, optimistic that we'll be able to collaborate and um, bring complementary points of view and, uh, and sensitivities to this project. Uh, uh, what is interesting is that uh, we do combine forces between researchers and school administrative leaders. I think Maria, who was just talking, um, is, is an example of, and Miriam, who was before, where we have uh, school administrative leaders who are researchers, and this makes it rich because they have different perspectives, and, uh, and it makes it um, very grounded in our, in our different functionalities in our school. Uh, we will be working with, um, to make it, to, to fill out the questionnaires, to, to answer the interviews. We have to work very closely with our, our respective uh, business networks and with national, national networks and our, and, our, and our institutional partners uh, to facilitate uh, this, this barometer of, of having some, some meaning, some grounding. So this is what we are learning. Again, we... Um, uh, you, you must understand that it was the Belgian, uh, Belgian partners that initiated it. It was the Flemish part of um, Belgium. So the, the, the first questionnaires uh, were carried out in the survey was, was, trans, was written in uh, Flemen, uh, Flemish and, uh, and it was translated in, uh, into French. And of course, it made it easier for the Dutch, of course, to use it because it was in their language, their common language. And it uh, was translated into French last, uh, last summer. And so it will, uh, it will now be available for our French network. And so those, I'm sure uh, those of you coming from other different regions in the world, regional networks um, would have similar, um, similar, I won't say challenges, it's a, just a realistic, um, realistic uh, way of, of working uh, within our greater regions. Of course, we, 
not only have linguistic challenges when we adopt or share tools, we also may have cultural adjustments. So this is what I want to share from our experience. And we'll be uh, getting together, um, our next step, we'll be getting together and deciding who is going to do what in terms of sharing the responsibility of, of implementing this, um, this very important uh, uh, SDG barometer. So we'll take it back to Jan, thank you. Yes, uh, thank you, Krista. And maybe before we continue to some overall conclusions of this uh, SDG barometer report we did in, in Belgium, um, I also wanted to ask you, all of you, um, if you have any questions uh, regarding uh, the process, uh, how we did it so far, how it is now also um, working in the Netherlands and in France, um, if you have any questions on that, um, please feel free to share that in the chat or directly via the microphone. Um, just maybe to come back in, in my experience and when, when we, we talked about it the last year during the prime chapter uh, meeting in Brussels, it was very interesting to already think and elaborate more on uh, how this could work for the prime chapter Benelux and France and how it is indeed there are challenges within uh, the countries how we would do it on the on the pro process uh, how we do, do the qualitative and quantitative research indeed the the language barrier um, maybe to say that uh, to Krista um, we in Belgium were a small country with a lot of languages um, so in that sense it was very very good that we uh, could work together with UC Louvain and, and, and Valérie here also, uh, that we actually started also with, uh, with the two languages. So we, we really worked with French and Flemish. Uh, and from that point on also uh, worked to also for the SEG Barometer 2018 to develop it and to make it even more or better in, in 2020. So we see that also, and I, that's what I like uh, in this project, to work together with colleagues in France, to we work together with colleagues in the Netherlands, to really make this uh, project uh, a really prime chapter project and to learn from each other, but also, of course, to, um, to see if there are future opportunities to work together on specific outcomes and conclusions we had from the several SDG barometer projects. And that's maybe where I can uh, dive in uh, next. But if there are any questions also on the process to Krista and Miriam, please raise it. Otherwise we will continue. I'm also looking at the chat. There is one question um, from Meta. Will you say something more about the practical implications for management, business and policy? I don't know if Krista or Miriam would like to jump in right now or if we will do that at the end. I, I think the layout that we had proposed um, uh, um, allows to conclude with that. So maybe we'll, we'll leave that at um, to, to the very end. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. Thank you, Meta, for the question. I, I think it's, it's a very, a very valuable question. question. <laughs> I will definitely dive into that. Uh, any other questions? Please raise that also in the chat. Um, in the meanwhile, I can continue with some overall conclusions. Um, as you see here on this uh, uh, slide, you see on the left side, for example, that the SDGs are moving center stage within organizations. We see an evolution. Uh, we're now six years into the agenda. Um, we have around nine years to go. Um, but we also see that COVID-19 is expected to delay uh, realization of the SDGs. So a lot of organizations in Belgium uh, see this. On the other hand, SDGs enable organizations to look beyond immediate self-interest. Another interesting insight. Um, but on the other hand, we also see that organizations take selective over holistic view of the SDGs. Um, linked with, you probably heard about the term SDG washing, uh, where they really look at specific SDGs. And is it a bad thing or is it a good thing? Um, that's also one of the um, discussion points we, we might raise as well. And then organizations see value in the SDGs beyond market related factors, which is an interesting result or conclusion. Um, 
But we also see that SDG impact assessments uh, are the exception. So how to really measure your impact as an organization towards these SDGs? It's a quite difficult question still for a lot of organizations. Maybe to continue with some uh, recommendations uh, pointed out in the Belgium as a G uh, barometer. First one, one of the recommendations to develop strategies to strengthen commitment to the SDGs. Um, we can discuss it further um, at the end of the call. Um, second one, it's really necessary to monitor the true effects of a crisis like uh, COVID-19 on the SDGs. And that's also uh, interesting to see uh, different results from different organizations uh, we, we saw uh, between, for example, a company or a governmental organization or an educational institution. Third, um, a recommendation to challenge existing materiality analysis. Uh, we've presented some of the results in the earlier part, but how do organizations or how should organizations use the SDGs in their materiality analysis? This is, I think, also very interesting for further research. And uh, fourth recommendation shed, shed light on SDG impacts and impact measurement directly related to one of the conclusions. And then uh, fifth, uh, bolstering the SDGs in education. Of course, we have an interesting audience here, uh, all working in the educational uh, sector. So um, also in our institutions, uh, the, the core institutions who worked on the Belgium SDG barometer, looking at uh, the University of Antwerp, UC Louvain, uh, Antwerp Management School, we also looked at this report and we um, spoke about it within the management team, within our chairs, our research chairs, but with all other staff as well within our organization. And that resulted in, okay, we really need to walk the talk. We want to be a sustainability or we want to have sustainability in our mission, in our vision but we really need to act on that. Um, so we worked on that since a couple of years now with several programs uh, towards our master students. Um, for one example is a global leadership skill course where we really focus on self-awareness, global perspective and societal consciousness where they work on several action learning projects related to the SDGs, that's one example. Another example, of course, is um, that we developed a sustainability progress report. And you see that on the right side. Um, we were very happy last week that we have uh, won the best impact uh, sustainability report award in Belgium, um, which is a nice recognition. We, have, we also made a movie about that and we we're extremely honored. Um, but of course, this means that we now really have to act. Um, we defined uh, our metri materiality topics. We defined our goals and targets and ambitions for the coming years on three uh, main um, themes, which is knowledge impact, a human impact and environmental impact. We also want to uh, link that with science-based targets, uh, the environmental impact. So now it's up to us um, to really work on that. and. You see that since actually the beginning, already in 2018, also before that, this SDG barometer report and also these recommendations that are coming out, um, giving a new vibe, a new atmosphere within our business school, but also in other universities and schools uh, like the University of Antwerp, like UC Louvain, uh, like Solvay Business School and others, to really look at how to integrate these SDGs in education, but also in uh, our way of working in campus management in uh, how are we dealing with these uh, global SDGs, these global goals. So this is um, what I wanted to uh, raise. Um, and maybe if there are in the meantime some questions, I'm also looking at the chat, but it's difficult to, um, to speak and also look at the chat. I see one question, how do you measure how the SDGs are incorporated into your academic programs? Do you have a set of indicators? Well, that's a very good question and thanks for that. 
Um, we received that award, best impact report, by um, how it is framed now, with critical success factors. So the next step is really to look at how can we measure that. And the one example that I gave around the global leadership skill course is that we are now trying to measure that with um, surveys. Uh, one of the next steps will be to have a questionnaire for all master students because it's now part of their curriculum. They receive credits for that. So it's an obligatory program. And at the beginning of the year, we want to have uh, raise some questions on the three pillars, self-awareness, global perspective, and societal consciousness on their worldview, on their environmental view, how it changed uh, their, their way of thinking, their way of doing, um, how critical they are also towards sustainability and the SDGs. At the end of the program, at the end of the year, we want to raise similar questions to also see if there is an impact. But that's specifically around the educational program. When we look at for example, campus management, we really want to measure our impact with the science-based targets. So we're now in the process to develop that as well. And I give you, I can give you some other examples as well, but this might lead a little bit too far. But that's a challenge. Huh? From the critical success factors, really going and diving deeper into how can we measure really our impact. And that's one of our aims, and that's why. Uh, it's very nice to work with all kind of people within the prime chapter Benedict's France, because I think we're all on the same path, on the same journey to really do more on the SDG integration within all of our programs and, and campus management. And we can learn a lot from each other on how to measure our impact, how to set goals, how to set ambitious. Um, so I, ho I hope this is part of, of uh, that answer. Um, I see that uh, some people are already responding to the question I raise here. Um, maybe uh, before I continue with that, is uh, Miriam or Krista, do you want to elaborate more on the question raised? Uh, how do you measure uh, how SDGs are incorporated into academic programs within your institutions? I, I don't I don't I don't feel particularly um, an expert in, in this in this I think it's something that we, we we write the global compact report like like I think um, the other members around the table we um, we went through an, an audit an uh, CSR commitment uh, it's called Erasur uh, engagé these are one ways that we um, we identify our our our, our Practices or and 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 we are able to get some feedback in terms of what are our strengths, what what are the areas we, we should be working on. So we do monitor using using different frameworks. Uh, I and uh, but I I I think Miriam or I think anyone around the table could could literally you know answer that this type of question. Yeah, I, it, it, it's. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah, I would be interested to also to hear from those present here how it works in your schools. Whether you, you, you try to track this at all also? Maybe yeah, I think a that... short comment from, uh, from RSM at Erasmus University. Uh, for the education and research part, we have developed a, a, an SDG tracker, an SDG mapper. Uh, using AI technology, and we use different, say, source projects and an, uh, and a Google algorithm that is in the free domain to uh, to do that. And now we can uh, we can map all documents we produce. It's, it's we do uh, articles, a PhD thesis, MSc thesis, uh, canvas, uh, course descriptions, everything that's text based can now be indexed. And this is how I try to say raise the level of awareness on the relatedness of our work to the SDGs. It's not an impact measurement, but it's just a humble way of say, creating a connectiveness between impact dialogues and, and content dialogues. And this, uh, by creating dashboards, this helps to, to, to raise the awareness on this point. Yeah, I, I, I think- might, 
I might I might pitch in one 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 uh, something along the same vein. We had the initiative where we we're, where were asked. In fact, we were asked. It was an initiative. We were asked to fill out when we were filling out our syllabi to uh, check in, fill in a little um, information box, uh, estimating the percentage of which SDG was integrated uh, into our uh, individual modules. So it was left to up to each professor to to make this estimate. There was no checking, but it was an attempt, maybe like Wilfred was saying, to to kind of um, to generate an awareness when you have to fill in the box, you think to what extent do I, should I do more? Um, I, I have to fill in something. That's what we did. Yeah. I think there are a lot of good initiatives and um, I think uh, it, it is a challenge uh, to go from SDG awareness or SDG mapping, what we also did at, at our management school towards all our initiatives. And now going to how we really measure the impact. Um, and this maybe relates to the question I, I raised here. Eh? What do you think are the prioritized SDGs for educational institutions? So a lot of institutions are mapping their initiatives towards the SDGs and also link that with this, these are our prioritized SDGs. So maybe in the chat, just share what you think are the prioritized SDGs for educational institutions. I uh, saw already one comment um, from Vincent uh, SG4, which might be no surprise, of course. Any other um, SDGs that you would like to put forward as prioritized SDGs for educational institutions? Maybe just to use the microphone and instead of the chat, so we said, of course, SDG 4, um, but as a business school also eight um, decent work and economic growth and 12 uh, responsible consumption and production. And because we work as much as possible in, in partnerships, also cross sector partnership 17 is um, the spearheaded SDG as well. Um, but still, we also acknowledge that uh, um, a, a more uh, well, we acknowledge that, that the set of 17 are really a set of 17. So it's also difficult and sometimes even dangerous to cherry pick. Yeah, yeah if you if you look at the indexing we do for publications, you see that there's no school who does all the 17 SDGs. So they have a footprint, at least in research on a few combinations, mostly people and planet. If you order it in the, in the Stockholm resilience model, the wedding cake model, you see that that uh, economy and people is, is really our core business. Planet is, is not much represented in the publications, at least not yeah. in the top articles. Yeah, and if I just uh, compare uh, the, also in the chat, uh, SG 12, 13 came out. Uh, if we compare that with the results of the Belgian barometer, uh, you see that these answered uh, the most. So three, four, five, 10, and 12 uh, were pointed out as the prioritized SDGs for educational institutions in Belgium. Of course, uh, like you also said, uh, Wilfred, it's, it's the aim now, okay, prioritize SDGs, but how to measure impact and what can you do more? Um, so maybe another question, if I look at the time as well, how do you think educational institutions see their relationship with the SDGs? Um, these are the categories that we pointed out in the Belgian uh, barometer. So there is, as of yet, no relationship between the SDGs and our organization. Uh, organizations use the SDGs as an informal inspiring framework or indeed focus on SDG 4. Uh, SDGs are an important formal point of reference um, or organization takes into account certain SDGs in its educational policy. Just think about it. And in the meanwhile, I'm also ready as I look at the time uh, to the results. And you see here that uh, the majority say that there is as of yet no relationship between the SDGs and organ organization. Um, of course, um, 27%, for example, say that their organization uses the SDGs as an informal and inspiring framework. And you see that as well eh, with a lot of uh, uh, business schools, universities, 
that um, they are mapping the SDGs and they want to work with it. And it's a very um, inspiring framework, uh, like a compass to, to work even more on uh, the SDGs. And maybe a last point I wanted to raise before we maybe have some time for a last discussion, to what extent do the educational programs offered by institutions currently take into account the SDGs according to you? This is a result of the Belgium uh, barometer. 58% uh, indicate that this was the case for some of their programs and 18% respond that this was the case for the majority or all uh, educational programs. And interestingly, the result shows that 21% of the educational institutions do not know to what extent their programs currently take into account the SDGs. Um, so these were just some insights from uh, the specific group, the educational institutions. And maybe with the time left, we can have one or two more questions. Maybe we can we can have I've seen some of the the um, Callis has has just shared share he's just shared a or you've shared a, a MOOC about business and the SDGs. Can you tell us something about what you've done here? Um, yes, thank you, Kirsten. Well, I can tell a little bit. I haven't uh, developed it myself. So my colleague Eva Roth, uh, who has been with uh, Rotterdam School of Management for uh, many years. Uh, developed this uh, SDG MOOC um, as kind of an introductory to um, working uh, in business and uh, taking part in the SDGs. And you go through each one of the SDGs uh, and she recorded over 77 videos with entrepreneurs and um, academics from uh, RSM um, to really show the interlinkages between, uh, between business and between the SDGs and uh, really providing food for thought as to how you can engage with them in in a way that also um, kind of takes into account the interconnectedness the, and the wickedness of the problem, because that's, I think, in, something to add to the discussion as well. It's not just about that we engage with the SDGs, it also matters how we do it. Because if we, like, I think someone, um, perhaps it was Miriam who mentioned that, um, you know, there's a, the whole set is there. It's not just you can't pick one or two of the three SDGs, they're all interconnected. So when you, um, when you interact with one, you're all, automatically uh, affecting a different one. And I think that's, uh, yeah, that's something that's represented within this, this MOOC to have the systems thinking uh, behind it. Great. And, and Valérie, Valérie Swan, you, you've talked about another MOOC that is out there. And, uh, uh, yes, I'm there, uh, but uh, it's also another MOOC about SDGs. I think there are plenty of different MOOCs today about SDGs, and I don't know specifically this one. I was not involved, but that's our colleagues from KU Leuven who launched it last year. So I think there is plenty of options to, to, you know, to look for. And we are also involved in uh, European projects uh, with uh, different universities uh, in different countries where we plan also to have some capsule about how to develop SDG integration in universities and in particular in teaching as one set of, um, one part of the project, but this will be, uh, probably finished only in one year or maybe a bit more. I will that's, keep you informed, of course. Yeah, that, that, that's you. an interesting development. And maybe, if I may, also yeah. an interesting bridge to, um, well, the conclusion um, of the SDG barometer, or rather the purpose, because the purpose is not so much to do the survey, uh, which we have been stressing so far, but the survey is used um, well, to get basic knowledge for further research. And the aim, especially in the form of a uh, chapter project, is also to get other schools involved, um, first of all, within the region, but hopefully later on also on, on a broader scale so that we can start developing a chapter database on the SDG, both in business and in education and involve researchers or at least establish the interaction and, and the connection between researchers so that we know who is working on what, um, maybe work together or maybe use the insights from your colleagues' research and, and build on that. So um, yeah, the, the scope and, and the purpose um, of the SDG Barometer project as a prime chapter uh, project is much broader um, and really aims at connecting research as well.
So maybe on that note, uh, Miriam, I will uh, would, would uh, say thank you very much uh, because uh, it's now the quarter. It is now five o'clock, at least in some parts of the world. <laughs> uh, and uh, I just want to thank you so very very much uh, for sharing with us your work on the SGD barometer. I think it is um, it's a wonderful tool. I was really happy to see uh, you know more of the details of what you've been doing, and uh, I really want to. Uh, you know, acknowledge that you've been working across France, Netherlands, Belgium, three countries, many languages involved and, and a lot of schools involved. And also that's one, one country is starting. And then as Krista also said, other countries are following and, and learning as you go along and develop. So I understand this has been a huge endeavor and with a, with a big repository now of answers to your questionnaires, about a thousand um, uh, uh, responses as, as you got so far and even with an ambition not only research but also for practice and with policy implications so I would be I would be you know very happy to to discuss with you as we go along if some of the other chapters would uh, be interested in working with you on this I know that the prime chapter Central Eastern Europe have also done research across countries and I, I could just see what Mick Pendenskill, the chapter chair, has been doing there. Might be very, he might be very interested in, you know, knowing more about what you've done here. But thank you so very much for, you know, for, for this uh, wonderful last hour. I really enjoyed it. Uh, thank you very much, Jan, Miriam, and Krista, for this uh, uh, chapter talk for February 2021. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you everyone. Thank you as well. Thank you very much. We'll be in touch. Yes, we will. Bye.